Hi, this episode, I'm going to talk about the disaster loan assistance program. This is related to the COVID-19 crisis that we're going through right now. This is AIO Financial. Thank you for joining me. I'll run through this. This is part of three videos, blogs, podcasts that I'm doing about the coronavirus response. First one was about our financial recommendations investing at this time. The second was about the relief package, but I didn't go into detail about the loan assistance. And so I'm going to talk specifically about that portion of the relief package. I am self-isolated along with the rest of the community here. So I am actually doing business as usual. We're meeting people virtually, but we're not uh meeting people in person or traveling to our different offices so let me run through this loan assistance program and it's for small businesses there are two programs it's part of the big relief package one is called the economic injury disaster loans part of the package or program and the other is called the ppp the paycheck protection program. So the economic injury disaster loans, that one is a grant. So they're just giving money. Both of these are for businesses impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. So if you have employees unable to work directly due to being sick from this, trying to maintain payroll, meeting increased costs, due to material not being available, making mortgage payments, rent payments, repaying obligations. This is all up to $10,000 to grant, help your business, you don't have to repay it. The PPP program, this Paycheck Protection Program, it's loans, some of them can be forgiven, and I'll go over that portion, but it's loans and it can be large up to, I believe it's 10 million. We'll go over how much you can get as well. I have a few examples, but this, it can be forgiven. Yeah, they're partially forgiven. Uh, payroll co costs, interest on mortgage, rent, utilities. You know, it's just to try to get you through it. Uh, no more than 25% of the forgiven amount can be used for non-payroll costs. So really what they're trying to do is keep people workers on payroll and that'll be the best for the recovery when this is over or slows down or gets better having people on payroll will make it really easy for them to get back into the workforce as opposed to laying people off and then needing to rehire people and it also keeps their health insurance um, so it, it's definitely beneficial i mean i can see the motivation for why they want to keep people on payroll Okay, what qualifies as a payroll cost? So of course, salaries, wages, tips are equivalent, vacation, family leave, sick leave, allowance for separation or dismissal, payments of state and local taxes, yeah, self-employment or similar compensation. So this is for all sizes of businesses. The primary thing they're trying to cover is payroll costs, are the salary, wages, commissions, just their compensation that right now isn't happening due to the crisis. What's excluded, compensation to employees, whose principal place of residence is not in the US. Compensation for individuals who have an excess annual salary of 100,000. Federal employment taxes imposed or withheld between February 15th and June 30th. So those are the exceptions. Qualified sick and family leave for which a credit is allowed. So if you're getting a tax credit for it, you can't also get a payroll exemption that you don't have to pay back that part of the loan. So they just don't want you to work the system, but it's only for U.S. residents or people resided in the U.S. that are employees. Independent contractors, they are not covered under this because independent contractors have the ability to apply for a PPP loan on their own. So yeah, a company does not get credit or does not apply it on behalf of independent contractors. Interest rate of the loan is 0.5%. Now this is a moving target. I saw 1% and then the last thing before uh, recording this, I saw half a percent. So 
th this whole thing is very new. It's only been, you've been able to apply Friday and today's Monday. So just, you know, three days ago. And it, there's probably some things that may change. This may not be 100% accurate by the time you do try to go through the application process, if this applies to you. Oh, when you start paying the interest, all payments are deferred six months. However, interest will continue to accrue over this period, but it's really low interest. When are the loans due? It's a two-year loan. Can you pay it earlier than two years? Yes. No payment penalties or fees. You can pay it off how you want. There's no collateral required for these loans. Who is eligible? So really, a, a lot of people, if you've been impacted by this coronavirus uh, pandemic. So businesses, corporations, ESOPs, tribal small businesses, private nonprofit organizations, you just have to have not more than 500 employees. So a lot of businesses, I guess not the mega, more than 500 employee businesses. Um, individuals who operate under sole proprietorship with or without employees, independent contractors, you could still, you can still apply for loans and that can cover, you know, rent non, you, you won't get that part forgiven, but you can, if it's not payroll, you can still apply for a loan and get a loan to keep you going. What forms do I need to fill out and how do I submit an application? So the Small Business Association is collecting the information to get this loan um, out. And I have a link on the show notes. I'll put it there. But it's covid19relief.sba.gov. That should get you to the application process. I think first they look at just if you qualify and then it goes through the application. How much can I borrow? All right, this is not the easiest question. So up to $10 million, but it's the aggregate payroll costs from the last 12 months of employees who whose principal place of residence is the United States. Subtract any compensation paid to an employee in excess of annual salary. You know, I misspoke there when I said that if you don't have employees, you can't apply. For the payroll protection plan, you need to have employees. It's for payroll. I guess for the grant portion, uh, if your business is impacted, you could uh, still apply for that up to $10,000. You take their 12 months of employee salaries, subtract compensation paid to employees with an excess annual salary of $100,000 or any amounts paid to independent independent or sole proprietor, sole co contractors, independent contractors, sole proprietors in excess of $100,000. Calculate a average monthly payroll costs. So you just divide by 12. Multiply by 2.5. Add outstanding amount of that economic injury disaster loan, so that $10,000 maximum amount, and that's your amount. So it's really two and a half months worth of payroll for non, you know, highly compensated employees. So here you go. Here's an example. No employees make over 100,000. With all your employees, it's $120,000 is the annual payroll. The average monthly payroll is $10,000. Nice, easy numbers. Multiply by 2.5, $25,000. The maximum loan amount would be $25,000 in that case. And I do have these examples on the blog. Some employees make more than 100,000. Annual payroll is 1.5 million. Subtract the compensation amounts in excess of the annual salary of 100,000. Then they're saying about 1.2 million is the annual salary. Average monthly qualifying payroll would be $100,000. Just divide it by 12. Multiply by 2.5, we're looking at $250,000. They will compensate for people making over $100,000, but just up to $100,000. Maximum loan amount in this example, too, is $250,000, quarter million dollars, $250,000. Example three, no employees make more than $100,000. They do have an outstanding EIDL loan or grant of $10,000. Annual payroll of 120,000. Average monthly is 10,000 dollars. 
So we have $25,000 when we multiply by 2.5 to cover 2.5 months. Then you add in the EIDL loan amount, 10,000. So our total now is $35,000. The maximum loan amount is $35,000. All right, one more example. Employees make more, there are some that make more than $100,000 and there's a $10,000 EIDL loan outstanding. Annual payroll, 1.5 million, when you subtract the compensation in excess of $100,000 per employee, you get 1.2 million. This is the same as example number two, but we have, so we have average monthly qualified payroll of $100,000, multiply by 2.5, 250,000, and then add the EIDL loan amount of 10,000. So we'll have 260,000 would be the maximum loan amount. So it's helpful just to go over these calculations, or I think it's helpful, just so that you know if it's worth the hassle. If you don't have significant payroll, and if you can cover it from other sources, then this might not be worth the process. Another point with the economic conditions right now is mortgage rates are very, very low. So if there is, you know, a business owning their own building or self-employed people with a mortgage, you know, refinancing could be an option. You know, of course you still have to qualify for it showing income, but you know, that, that could be an option for some people that has nothing to do with these loan programs, just could be an option to consider. Terms for loan forgiveness. So the loan amounts will be forgiven if they, have, if they are used to cover payroll costs, mortgage interest, rent and utility costs during an eight week period after the loan is granted. So you get two months of forgiveness if it's used for mostly for payroll. It needs to be 75% for payroll. And then the other 25% can be used for other expenses. Business owners will owe money when their loan is due if they use the loan amount for anything other than those items. Forgiveness will also be reduced if they decrease their full-time employee headcount or if they decrease salaries and wages by more than 25% for any employment employee making less than $100,000. Couple other points with the terms for loan forgiveness. They qualify regardless of whether they have suffered property damage and can use the funds to help meet worker capital needs, cover operating expenses as they recover. So your business must be experiencing a business loss related to COVID-19. So that covers a lot of businesses. I mean, a lot of us are impacted by this. Um, but it needs to be more than you know this 25%. So according to the guidelines, when calculating the size of your business, you must include the annual receipts and employees of domestic and foreign affiliates, regardless of whether the affiliates are organized for profit. What documents are required? So there's a bunch of documents. They're all on that form, but the application SBA form five, tax information, so that's the IRS form 4506T, copies of all schedules, most recent federal income tax returns, personal financial statement, that's SBA form 413. Again, these will be in the show notes. And that's personal financial information for each principal owning 20% or more of the business. Schedule of liabilities, that's form 2202. Complete copy all schedules. And send most recent income tax return for each principal owning 20% or more. Each general partner, managing member, each affiliate, and any owner that has more than 50% ownership. If the most recent federal income tax return has not been filed, a year end profit and loss statement balance sheet for that tax year. So that would be for 2019. If you haven't done the taxes, there's a way around that. Additional filing requirements, SBA form 1368. Providing monthly sale figures will generally be required when requesting an increase in the amount of economic injury. In summary, two loan programs, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, and that is a grant 
for people directly impacted by this, emergency grant for up to $10,000. The second program, Paycheck Protection Program Loan. And that, some of it can be, at least for the first two months, can be forgiven, and it's for payroll costs. The amount that you can get depends on your payroll. It's generally covering two and a half months of payroll costs, and they'll forgive up to eight weeks, so two months of it. So they could forgive a, a large percentage of that. Two and a half months, man, that would be good. And this could extend. Hopefully, two and a half months, we're feeling like we're in a different period than we are now. So this is pretty time critical. Definitely let me know if you have any questions. Again, I'm just learning about this. This is a moving target. I'll put a link to where you can see if you qualify and where you can apply, but I'm just trying to give you an overview of, of what this would look like and if it's worth your effort to apply. Thanks, if you need any help with any of your finances, you can contact us, we're at aiofinancial.com. We're fiduciaries fee only, we don't sell products, we don't get commissions, we're comprehensive. We look at all parts of your finances, including your business, if it's you know small business, and that's why we're covering this. But investment management, retirement planning, tax planning, insurance, estate planning, anything you want. We do offer a free upfront meeting. So feel free to reach out to us again, aiofinancial.com. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay social distancing, and hopefully we'll all get through this, you know, as soon as we can. All right, take care. Bye.